turn to the person next to you on one side, then the other, and I know you did some high fives with Simon Bailey yesterday. Uh, however, I have been taught by my godchildren who live in Dallas that doing a normal high five is a very, like, old. So when you do it, this is how you have to do it from now on, okay? You do a high five, but you follow it with the most creative, like, thing that you can do with the sound, okay? So ready? On the count of three, you're going to high five each other for an amazing organization. One, two, three, go. High five and then <coughs> And, and, come back, come back. That's going to be the first, come back, come back, the first of our F words that we're going to be covering this morning. Now remember, I'm an Australian, so I'm different from others, and I did not wake up this morning thinking, how can I offend these people today? So if I do anything mistakenly that's a little bit like different, could you please say, forgive her, she's an Aussie, okay? <laughs> so I don't think I will, but just in case. And, and so the fish is the first part. The second thing, I really want to thank you because I've been speaking 30 years. I know, it's amazing. I did start when I was four. And um, uh, in that time, I have really been focused on how important feelings are. Do you know, really, you are the first organization, and I promise I'm not, um, 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 you know, like faking this. Uh, I don't know the right word to use. Uh, I, I have never seen an organization where I truly get that you value people before anything else. And that is astonishing. It's the first time I've actually seen an entire company where every single person I've spoken to has actually really like feels and believes with their heart that people are the most important part of staying strong. And it really is your secret to staying strong. So having said that, have you all seen the bell curve? <clears throat> you know the bell curve? Go, go like this if you've seen the bell curve. Because otherwise you're just sitting staring at me. So I'm guessing some of you haven't seen the bell curve. So let me describe it. It's, it's this shaped like a bell. See, that's why it's called a bell curve. And, and in any group, anywhere, the bell curve principle applies. So there are three kind of essential groups. So in this group, with this group here, in each of your teams, in each of your restaurants, with your crews, the bell curve applies. Now, the difference between you, this is, and I, I believe this is true, the difference between you at Culver's and most normal organizations is that you're kind of in this area. But in this area, there's also a bell curve. Does that make sense so far? Okay, and the way it's split up is that this group up here are the successful people. These are the people who really live the, the philosophy that people are our most important quality essence. That's the essence of the difference between Culver's. We're honest, we have integrity, and we smile because we love what we do. This is why you have people who say, why wouldn't I smile? This is my happy place. And that's the, that's the kind of foundation I want to work on with you today, to try and create a new concept called, it's just kind of a little shift from where you are, called Culver's Joy. What do you think? Yeah, no, I can, okay, good, don't clap, we haven't got time. So the people up here are the ones who were clapping, who thought Culver's Joy is a great idea. These people love change. They're early adopters of change. They jump in, they're the ones who are winning the, the challenge. They're the ones who um, win to be in the top five with the challenge. So that's the kind of essence of these people. And then in the middle, there's an awful lot who, you know, they're kind of average. Now the ones at this end, they're kind of better than average, and the ones here, well, a little bit less than average. And, uh, but, you know, they're the sort of, well, it is what it is. You know, I go, well, it is what it is, what it is. We do our best. You know, we, we don't have an easy geographic, demographic thing. You know, like we do our... Mm, mm. And then there's a group of people down here who actually suck. <laughs> now, the, the truth is... <laughs> See, look at all those successful people, they're clapping. Anyway, it's the, the truth is they don't actually suck. They're actually stuck. And, and they're stuck in, in a form of thinking that is not smart. 
And, and so the secret to staying strong is really the difference that makes the difference between these three. And, and if I help you, what do you think it is? What's the difference that makes the difference between these three? And a couple of people have mentioned it, but, but I'll help you, okay? So the difference that makes the difference between these three is the T-M-M-M-K-I-N-G of the people. What is it? It's thinking. And, and I, I know when you hear this, most people, they sort of go, well, well, duh. That's like not that big a thing. Well, no, but nobody ever talks about thinking, really. We, we talk about all the principles, and yes, we value people first, and we smile, and you're a, a treasured guest, and we honor you. you. You say all the words, but we don't often actually stop to go to the source, which is the thinking. And it really is only the thinking that makes the difference between whether you are successful, average, or you're stuck or suck. So, and, and here's the other little piece. So everybody goes, yeah, well, that's obvious. But what isn't obvious is how much of the time do you think you are actually unconscious, literally unconscious of what you're thinking? You're never going to guess, so I'll help you. It's 90-something um, it's to 90-something percent of the time. What do you think? 95 to 99% of the time. 95 to 99% of the time. Seriously, you, you don't even know you had a thought. You've just behaved. The, a reaction has come out, and you've got no idea that a thought even triggered that behavior because it's completely unconscious and because the body works so fast. Now, here's the trick. Because everything does start with heart, what most people don't know is that we have three brains in our body. We have the head brain, you know, the brain brain inside the brain, and then in the heart, we have a more powerful brain. There are more neurons in your heart than there are neurons in your brain. And then the third place, where do you reckon it is? Yeah. No, it's not there. <laughs> I forgot you were mostly Midwest. You have that like Australian sense of humor. No, it's the gut. It's the gut. And so when people say, <laughs> You have, I don't know what you were thinking, but I'm sure it was not good. Anyway, <laughs> it's, it's the gut. Mm -hmm. You have, again, millions of neurons in your gut. So when somebody says, I use my gut feeling to make a decision, and we all go, oh, yeah, you're a bit strange. No, they're actually smart. So we literally do have a heart brain. And there's a big nerve called the vagus nerve that goes from the heart to the brain brain, the head brain. And, and the heart, what the heart thinks, actually rules what goes on in the head. So knowing that, when we say it starts with heart, everything starts with thinking, and the thinking in your heart is something that we're not very conscious of, because 95 to 99% of the time we're unconscious. So how do you get from suck to success. And the trick is to become, it's very simple, but you can all go, ooh, when I say it, an observer, observer of your thinking. That says thinking, I haven't got time. So, ooh, see, and now most people think, well, yeah, that's interesting, but we're now going to practice it. So, on the count of three, you're going to be looking at the person on one side of you that are already high-fived, and uh, you're going to look deeply into their eyes. And, now stop, stop this moment. Let's just observe what you thought. Now, how many of you went, awesome opportunity, wow, this is going to be great, I can look deeply into the eyes of the total stranger right next to me. These people thought that, uh-huh, these people went, oh no. <laughs> and these people went, no, nah. <laughs> no problem, just no, nah, not doing it. And, and you see, <laughs> you don't want people like that. And of course, remember, have you all worked, uh, like you've all worked in groups, I know you have crews, and I would imagine that you select very quickly out the people who suck. Uh, because people who suck hate a Culver's environment because you're all happy. <laughs> and you smile. 
and you treat the guests really well, and you value what you do, and you have integrity, and you honor all of that stuff. And these people, they would love to be like that, but they're stuck in the wrong form of thinking. They're brought up in an environment where everything's negative, nothing's ever going to work out, blah, 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 life's going to blow up, you know, it's all terrible. And they focus on all the bad stuff. Now, you've all had someone like that in your crew, haven't you? <laughs> oh, some said, no, excellent. And the rest are going, yes. And what are they like? It only takes one person like that, and the entire organization is sucked down. Is that true? And when the person who sucks leaves, what's it like? Yeah, it's like, whoa, the sun came out. Whoa, everybody's happy again. See, the, these people listen to me and they think, oh, yeah, she was funny, stupid, but funny. But you know, these are the core essential things of life. But we've become so sophisticated and so fancy-wancy with everything that we talk about that we forget the core fundamentals, that we're dealing with people who have feelings, and they've all come from different backgrounds, and there are some who are just stuck in the poor little things. Sometimes, if they get into a really good culver's environment, they'll be able to transition. But if they can't transition, time for them to go somewhere else, because they're going to destroy you. Now, let's go back to what you were thinking when I said you're going to look deeply into the eyes of the person next to you. Now, I didn't say you had to tell them you loved them or anything like bad. I just said look at them. And I guarantee most of you went into this. For what? <clears throat> One of the core fears. See, if you observe your thinking, what do you think for what stands for? Fear of what others think. And I hate to burst your bubble, but honestly, no one else is ever thinking about you, ever. <laughs> Seriously. I promise you, now don't clap, we haven't got time. I promise you they are not thinking about you because they are so obsessed with what you are thinking about them, they don't have time to think about you. And here is the other piece, and this is going to form one of the foundations. So thinking is the foundation of our Culver's joy. We're all going to observe our thinking and catch the thoughts that block our joy or steal our joy, because they literally do steal our joy. And then the second part is how do we start to encourage everyone to um, be seen and see others? One of the, the most core um, needs in a human being is to be seen for who they really are. And that sounds a bit space cadetish and a bit new ages, but the truth is we hardly ever see anybody because we're so obsessed with ourselves. And yet we have all these people walking around lonely, hungry for recognition, hungry to be seen as a worthwhile contributing human. And that's one of the reasons your culture works so well, because you do that with every team member and you do it with guests. That's why they come to Culver's and they say it feels like home. The bottom line is it's because you make the effort to see people. So on the count of three, you're going to be looking at the person on one side and then the other side. You're going to look deeply into their eyes. Just notice your thinking as I say it. And you are going to say, I see you. Now, you have to say, pay attention, just observe again. What did you think? It's like, oh no, it's getting worse. Oh no. <laughs> Next she's going to make us touch them. Oh. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Anyway, so you're going to say, I see you, but you have to mean it. And we're going to talk a bit about this in the session this afternoon, because if you don't mean it, the other person will know. And if you look at the person next to you and you go, oh, you go, oh yeah, I see you. Oh. And then you go to the other side, oh, I see you. How do you think they feel? Not that good. So no one wakes up in the morning going, how can I make other people feel bad? So the person next to you, if they look at you and they go, oh, I see you, um, help them. Because they're suffering from faux what. So all you have to do is to to bend down and make eye contact with them. Okay, so, so whatever angle they're looking at, just follow them and find them. <laughs> That's one option. Or the second option is you can say to them, <laughs> you didn't mean that. <laughs> you know, be nice when you say it, because it helps them understand that other people see that they can't, you know, they don't mean it. And so they have to repeat it until they do mean it. 
observe your thinking. <laughs> These ones are going, it's getting worse, how can I get out of here? <laughs> These ones are going, how long is she on for? And these ones go, awesome, when can we start? <laughs> See, it makes such a difference. This is all thinking. So ready, on the count of three, looking, 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 and then say, I see you, and then the other side. Ready, one, two, three, go. Looking, 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 I see you. Looking now the other side, the other side, looking, I see you. <clears throat> nice.